I'd like to thank uh, everyone for coming uh, this evening, and we're going to get started. Uh, before I do uh, the inter introductions, um, I'd like to uh, have uh, Katie uh, say a few words, because uh, she's not uh, going to be in the panel tonight. Hi, um, I actually can't participate in partisan politics, so I can't, uh, because I'm a federal employee. And, oh, there's some question, of course, I couldn't call up the, uh, the uh, attorney's office today because there is a furlough, so, unfortunately. Um, so, but I do, I can answer these, I, I will promise to answer the questions, I will post them on my website for people who are interested in my opinions, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Liette, Herman, Rosanna, Pippin, Anthony, Ron, Jess, and Joanne for being here this evening. Uh, we have a lot of questions and the format is set up so that each of the candidates had an opportunity to study the questions in advance. And the idea is for them to have a uh, very succinct, very clear answer uh, for you. Uh, at the end of the program, uh, each candidate will be given one minute closing, uh, a closing uh, opportunity to speak. And if they find any issues difficult, uh, they should address them at, during that minute. Um, okay. Uh, one question from each of the numbered categories below will be asked. Candidates will be given one minute to reply. Because the questions have been released in advance, candidates will be expected to answer directly and succinctly. If time allows, additional questions from the list will be asked. Questions from the categories will be randomly picked. The first category is the Vallejo Economic Development Strategy Plan. The Economic Development Strategy Plan identifies our major community assets to be high-skilled and available workforce, the low cost of doing business, and location and transportation infrastructure. It also identifies our main challenges, including negative views of Vallejo, crime and public safety, government inefficiency, and slow Mare Island remediation. What I'd like uh, our randomly drawn first person is a Rosanna, and I'd like you to pick one of Vallejo's assets in the plan and talk about how you would promote it if elected using suggestions from the plan. Good evening. Um, what I would like to choose as an asset is the highly skilled and available workforce. Um, based on the economic development uh, strategic plan, it shows that Vallejo is uh, has 31% uh, of Vallejo's workers have at least an associate degree. That means they have, uh, you know, technical uh, knowledge. And we are keeping them from working in Vallejo because there's no jobs and opportunities for them to, prov to, to work here. And they go out of Vallejo. And so that's, commute time is so, uh, you know, uh, challenging for these folks. They have families. So one of the things that I would like to do again is to, uh, uh, encourage investment in our community, meaning make Vallejo a business-friendly community, make sure that we uh, provide, do a marketing plan so that businesses come to Vallejo. Uh, we have lots of uh, things to offer in our city. We have the water, we have the highly skilled force, plus, you know, we have um, the facilities to do that. We have very low cost of retail, um, what I'm saying is low, low rent leases, so that would helpfully entice businesses to open uh, uh, their, their uh, companies here and again make use of the highly skilled workforce that Vallejo has. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, Pippin, can you um, answer the same question? Do you yeah. need me to repeat it? Nope. Um, so uh, I chose also the same asset that Rosanna chose. Vallejo does have a highly skilled labor force, and we also have a strong healthcare industry. Um, it, healthcare has been identified as the number one growth industry in Solano County over the next 10 years, and we are fortunate to have both Kaiser and Sutter located right here. Um, 
It is interesting to note, though, that they, uh, both hospitals employ a large number of healthcare workers, and the majority of them come from out of town. Um, and there are a large number of Vallejo residents that are employed in the healthcare industry, and they commute out of town to work. So I would like to look at ways to encourage Sutter and Kaiser to hire uh, local employees. Also, a large number of our residents that commute are manufacturing workers, and manufacturing businesses would have an, the advantage of drawing from that pool of employees by being located here. Um, this is huge because there are a lot of manufacturing, com manufacturing companies that are relocating to the U.S. and are struggling to find the skilled labor force to support their uh, operations. Also, manufacturing jobs have a multiplier factor. So for every manufacturing job created, there are seven to eight additional jobs created from sales to parts and services. Having the highest unemployment rate in the co county, it is crucial that we focus on creating more jobs. And the implementation process I would look at was um, the number one goal of the plan, which is business retention and uh, expansion, and um, developing that program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Liat. Should be on. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Close. Closer, can you hear me now? All right. I also picked the asset of being of our workforce here in Vallejo um, for a, a slightly different perspective. Um, we have the opportunity to bring high-skilled, high-wage businesses here because we have three colleges here in Vallejo. We have the opportunity to train the people that we have here to be able to move into those high-skilled jobs. The problem with Vallejo is that our economic base is so low and the people that have jobs here are commuting to other cities. So the fact that they could work here in, in Vallejo and that they could have more money to spend in Vallejo will help bring re new revenues here. So the other part of that is that we need to really move into a collaboration more with our colleges and the other um, uh, businesses that are in the area so that they can come up with training specifically for jobs that need to be filled within those corporations. So I'm hoping that we would use more of our ability to bring in our colleges and do training for the people that are here in Vallejo. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can hold, hold, let's hold the applause until we finish this uh, category question, then we can applause for everyone. Uh, the next uh, spokesperson would be Herman. Yeah, the, uh what I determined to be a tr tremendous asset is the low cost of doing business in Vallejo. I plan to, if, if elected, uh, platform a sales use tax obligation that would be the lowest in the Bay Area. This would be a motivation to attract Fortune 500 corporations to our jurisdiction. Uh, when they have a cost that's low like this, uh, they have a tendency to come to areas like this. Uh, Richmond had the same policy in place and a lot of those Fortune 500 corporations did not come to San Francisco and Oakland. They came to Richmond. We can do the same here. Uh, we can get manufacturing concerns, medical bio manufacturing concerns here. Uh, this is, this is a, a, a must. We've get, like, like, like it's been reiterated, we've got the highest unemployment rate in nine counties. So it's imperative that this be a number one priority to develop jobs. Uh, right now, our citizens are in a, in a state where they have no income. Uh, uh, the crime is real high. Robbery is, is, is the only alternative to no work. So let's get jobs. And, and I know I've, I've, heard, I've heard allegations about the jobs are not quality. Right now, we need any jobs. We need all jobs. Just f let's, let's lower the floodgates and let jobs come to this town immediately. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Ron Johnson. Just pull it and you'll have to get close. I'll just lean forward a little bit. Let me see. There you go. All right, that's a really good question there. I look at uh, Mir Island as being one of our greatest assets that we have. Uh, uh, Mir Island was used by the Navy uh, for many decades, and so when it was left to us, um, we had many different options uh, for its usage. And I think that 
going back to uh, using it as a port will open doors uh, for other opportunities in the, the manufacturing industry, um, uh, transport, uh, export and importing. And so I think that uh, once we start there, we'll have a, a nice little uh, boost in our economy and then we can look into further development in the other areas of uh, the island. And so uh, I think uh, starting there, uh, I think it'll give us a, a greater chance at uh, keeping ourselves out of uh, the possible bankruptcy again. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tony, you have to share. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. First of all, it was certainly hard to pick one, especially with the amount of intellectual capital that we do have uh, from our colleges here. Uh, however, um, in accordance with the plan, I want to grow family tourism in Vallejo and increase the overnight visitor stays. Uh, I strongly supported the Solano uh, 360 project, and I'm currently in conversation now um, working on a project for that site that could potentially keep tourists here for two, maybe two and a half days. Again, we are uh, excited about that possibility, and in fact, the persons that uh, we're in conversation with, they almost bought the Six Flags over here, but one of the things that uh, prevented them was the overnight uh, or the night features so that, that would allow families to stay in our city. So now there's something that we're working on that could strongly complement that, and we look forward to uh, continuously having that conversation. We believe Vallejo is a destination city where people want to come. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, Jess. Okay, well, it, it's kind of hard to pick uh, or single out one of the three uh, results of their findings. Uh, highly skilled workforce, low cost of doing business, and logistics and transportation. I think I'll combine all three. I think it's a winning uh, formula for, for any business. Uh, some of the skilled workforce are uh, left over from uh, the days when the shipyard was open, uh, but some are young people. We, we have... Uh, uh, people with uh, technical skills uh, and uh, associate's degrees, uh, and we just haven't advertised enough. The, the low cost of doing business is very significant. Uh, if a high-tech company were to come to uh, Redwood City or San Mateo or San Jose, it would cost them a ton of money to establish a business there where they could come to Vallejo and cut that cost in half. As far as logistics and trans transportation, we could invite our friends in Napa Valley to perhaps uh, stage, warehouse, distribute their goods uh, right out of Mare Island, and we just need to communicate that to them and entice them to come to Vallejo. So uh, I think all three as a combination is going to be good. Uh, thank you. Uh, and Joanne? Thank you. I also chose the low cost of doing business in Vallejo because it's a well-kept secret. If any of you are wondering where this information came from, this is it. It's on the website for the city. My perspective on this is a little bit different because I come from a sector of the economy where you are judged on results, not effort. Many times I have seen in the past that our economic development department is um, measured on how many packets they mail out and how many phone calls they answer. On the council, we need to set performance-based goals for the economic development director through the city manager. The economic development director needs to be a salesperson, not a marketer, should never be in the office. Um, that is something that the city manager can do. That's one of the reasons Vacaville has been so successful, because their economic development director is out there knocking on doors, not waiting for the calls to come in. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can we have some applause? The next question um, regards uh, medical marijuana. 
and uh, I hadn't heard anyone talk about it at any of the other functions, so uh, this was submitted uh, by me. Uh, Vallejo approved a marijuana tax in November of 2011. Um, what is your position on medical marijuana sales and use in Vallejo? And the specific question uh, is, should Vallejo have a consistent policy towards medical marijuana businesses? And first up is Pippin. Um, so yeah, uh, absolutely we should have a consistency in um, our policy in regards to medical marijuana dispensaries. So, um, you know, we, we have a tax currently that is being implemented that's a 10% tax on gross receipts from mar medical marijuana dispensaries. And um, the challenge with the implementation of that is that it's hard to know, first of all, how many dispensaries there are and if they're paying their tax correctly. Um, the, the policy should look at, you know, such things as how many dispensaries we should have, um, where should they be located, where should they not be located, um, what would their hours of operation be, and, um, you know, what, how their business operates. So, uh, so it, you know, it's important for the success of this um, uh, measure to um, make sure that there's consistency in, in the policy and regulation of these dispensaries. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, you're next. Okay. Again, to answer the first question of the, the status of uh, implementing the tax, again, the tax is currently, again, as Pippin mentioned, is 10% with a minimum of $500 per dispensary. Um, we, but we definitely need to put together a consistent plan on the medical marijuana being used in our city. In fact, um, well, I really believe we need to put a moratorium on the number of medical marijuana dispensaries that we put in our city because what I'm hearing uh, too often is that young people are getting access to these mar medical marijuana cards and uh, that's becoming more problematic than it is being an asset. So we certainly need to monitor, th monitor them closely and uh, make sure that they are paying their fair share of taxes if they're gonna do business in this town. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <coughs> uh, Ronald. Yes, I think that the, uh, we should uh, treat all of the uh, medical marijuana uh, dispensary businesses equally. Uh, it would be discriminatory to not do that. Uh, and I also think that simple regulation would alleviate any possible uh, discord between uh, the business owners and the, the city. Um, the uh, city attorney uh, could draft up regulations based on uh, the zoning and uh, with accordance to uh, the, the new court rulings and present, present them to the council for uh, approval and adoption. Uh, one of the things that we also need to uh, look into, uh, on the site it does say that I believe it's about 13 to 23 uh, dispensaries, so we need to locate each and every one of them uh, so that we can uh, uh, implement uh, in, any changes and affect all of uh, the uh, dispensaries as well as receive the uh, revenues from them. Uh, thank you. Uh, Joanne. Thank you. Um, yes, the tax has already been implemented. However, the last report that I got is that nine of the 30 medical marijuana dispensaries in Vallejo are actually paying their tax. That means there are 21 others out there who are not paying collection of the tax from those would provide a good revenue stream to the general fund. Um, should Vallejo have a consistent policy? Yes. What is my vision on it? That we limit the number of medical marijuana dispensaries that there are somewhere between three and five and that they be geographically located throughout the city not concentrated in one area as they were in the downtown area for a while. And that number does not change unless the population 
changes significantly. It's rather like the ABC used to limit liquor licenses to X number of licenses per town, and the only time you got a new license is if someone went out of business or the town grew significantly. That makes those licenses pretty valuable. I don't think we should ban them and ban the medical marijuana dispensaries entirely because that will not make them go away. It will just drive them underground, not too different from what we have now. Uh, thank you. Uh, Herman. Yeah, uh, in view of the shortfall deficit in our tax contributions to the general fund, we need all the tax revenues that we can muster up. And this is a tremendous source of tax revenues. However, we got to make sure it's not abused. We got to implement criteria to, to include that there's a limitation on how many dispensaries. We've got to open it up like an RFP process, a re request for a proposal, so all segments of the community can apply to, and applicate to be a, a deliverer of these services. We want these services to reflect diversity, just like the, the population in Vallejo. And I think this is key. But we should definitely Im implement a, a course that's consistent so that it's not abused and not the whole town of Vallejo has a medical marijuana problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rosanna. Um, my position is we want to make sure that we get an accurate count or inventory of the medical marijuana dispensaries. And, you know, actually, be, it, once we get that, then we want to know if they really are paying their taxes, who is paying and who is not paying. Um, it's the tax is 10% from their gross sales or a minimum of $500. And I know that the uh, sales for medical marijuana is substantial. So the tax should also be uh, substantial and that would help augment our, you know, our deficit. So you know, I'd like to look at the voter staff from our collection, you know, just like we're collecting water bills, right? Or water, water uh, payments. Um, perhaps look into the, the voting uh, staff person to look into that and make sure that they collect taxes. Uh, from these medical dispensaries. And I want to make sure that, just like we have an alcohol policy, that these dispensaries are not close to schools or uh, parks, because we want to keep it out of reach of children, from children. So that would be how I would uh, approach this uh, issue. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Jess. Thank you, John. Uh, you know, we, we allow dispensaries to operate in Vallejo, and uh, we did put a moratorium uh, against new dispensaries, <clears throat> and that's already in the books. Uh, do we need to uh, monitor? Uh, yes. Do we need to control taxation? Uh, do we need to manage uh, um, dispensaries and do we need to monitor dispensaries? Yes, we need to do all of those things. Uh, but take the money that is coming in now to help the city finances. But right now there is a moratorium, so we're not approving any more new uh, marijuana dispensaries. Uh, thank you. Uh, Liat? I do support regulating the medical marijuana dispensaries we have in town. I think the biggest mistake the city made was initially to go after all of the dispensaries and shut them down and intimidate them. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer dollars trying to intimidate and close down these shops and it did little of nothing to shut down the shops that we have now. That money could have been better spent by coming up with a regulation and how they were going to administer the MMDs here in town. It doesn't do any good to give them regulations if you don't have compliance and enforcement. And that's what our city does all the time. We have a lot of regulations and there's no compliance checks, there's no regulation. It's the same thing with alcohol and tobacco. We have plenty of rules on the books, but they mean nothing because they're just words on paper because we don't have anybody going to check to see whether or not these businesses are in compliance. And that was the most essential thing that needs to come out of that tax base is that we pay for the person that's going to actually do that work and make sure that we're collecting all the money that's due us and that these businesses are in compliance. Uh, thank you. And we can applaud if you think. Uh, 
Okay, our next category is from uh, Planning Department and Permit Processes and Fees. Uh, Vallejo has a large number of homes with secondary units. <coughs> Many are undocumented or not up to code compliance. Some property owners have been told by the planning department that it will cost approximately $30,000 to bring a one-bedroom basement apartment into compliance. For comparison, similar fees in Petaluma in Sonoma County are half that. So what we're talking about is a unfinished basement, a basement that doesn't have the electrical necessarily, has bare walls, uh, doesn't have a bathroom. Um, basically, it needs to, ha uh, well, to put in everything to turn it into a, a uh, second unit. Um, if elected, would you be willing to work towards implementing a plan to streamline the process for these units? And uh, Rosanna, first up. Uh, my answer to that first question is yes, I would like to streamline the process for these units. My concern is some of these folks that put in an addition without per the proper permit, you know, they have children in those units, and my concern is the safety. So, you know, I don't want kids living in an unsafe environment because many of these kids are poor or, or you know, don't have, the parents don't have the means to rent an apartment. So they uh, build, uh, you know, they stay with a family member and then they build this uh, additional, you know, rooms in, in the homes. So I'm looking at, yes, I'm in favor of, uh, you know, providing amnesty for these folks because we want them to come and rather than be penalized, we want them to, uh, volunteer the information and then uh, provide some assistance on how to fund it. You know, there may be grants or HUD money to help fund um, the uh, building these uh, bedroom units um, up to code because that's my concern. It's again the safety and well being of who is living in these uh, bedroom units. And I know that many of them are families with children. So that's my concern. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Um, Joanne, what is your position on this? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, yes, I certainly would work toward implementing a plan to streamline the process, not only on these units, but in the planning department and building in general. They all could use a little help. Um, consider declaring an amnesty on some fees. Um, yes, full or partial. And if the unit was safe, only if it was safe, grandfathering it in so that there would be no fees that would need to be paid until title changed hands. Again, that's only an option if the unit is safe. We have other grandfathered types of uh, requirements on the books. This would not be something new. Uh, Reevaluate fees so owners could afford to bring their units up to date. Again, yes, I think we have all heard multiple complaints about our permit fees and how they prompt people to do things without permits. Some of those are not safe. So we're losing out on revenue if people don't buy permits and if we have them priced so high that no one will, will uh, get one. We're defeating ourselves. So th that whole fee schedule needs to be revised. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ronald. Um, in all fairness, uh, I would like for uh, the planning department to uh, not only uh, streamline the uh, permit process, <coughs> but uh, also um, in doing that, you can look at these units. Uh, what we're missing out on is uh, additional tax revenue. I do agree that uh, the unit needs to be uh, safe, uh, especially if there's children there or anyone there. Um, however, uh, during the, uh, the process, um, I think that uh, Going ahead and, and allowing that additional room or bathroom or uh, basement, um, it, it will add to the property's uh, tax increase. So 
will receive, by streamlining the process, we can receive additional tax monies while the, the property owner is going through a process of uh, rehabbing uh, the property. Um, on a case-by-case -case basis, I, uh, I consider uh, declaring amnesty on some of the fees with the exception of properties that are not owner-occupied, and if they're uh, rentals, then they're receiving some additional monies for that, so they should uh, rehab that property. Um, I see I'm out of time, but I, I do have some really good ideas with that. But uh, with that said, uh, I'll end it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Tony. Yeah, I would be in favor of implementing a plan to streamline the process for the units and uh, certainly to reevaluate the fee scales such that the owners uh, not only um, could not only afford to bring their units up to code, but they would want to do the right thing um, in preventing code violations as well. Um, genuinely, I believe that the homeowners, they want to invest in their property and they may need to make money off of the units and or uh, provide for their families. But by us as city officials and certainly through the permitting process, uh, working with them, uh, on the fee scales and allowing the permitting process to be uh, a little more appetizing, again, as it stated, that it's uh, in Petaluma, it's, I mean, what, it's, it's almost 50% more than what we charge. So it would be reasonable for us to give consideration to homeowners who have invested uh, in our city and wants to be here. So this way, by us working closely with them, everybody wins. The city gets its revenues and the families are able to uh, have their homes uh, at the capacity in which they desire to have them. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Liat. I would be in agreement to having it streamlined and then some amnesties depending on what changes need to be made. I think one of the problems that we have is that we have a large number of rental properties here. Most of those rental properties include additions that have been put on the house so that they can charge more money for the rental properties. That would be one way to start looking at uh, if we're starting to register the rental properties to, to make sure that they're in compliance and that they are paying the fees that they need to because they're making uh, um, income off of these homes. The other part of that is that in some neighborhoods, almost every house has some portion of it that has something that's been done that has not been regulated. So this is a monumental task. So we would really have to look at whether or not we're gonna put additional funding into the planning and for the uh, investigators to go out and do the house. Because if you're gonna wait for people to come and tell you that they want you to have the house inspected, it's not gonna work. So other than knocking on every single door and asking for the house to be inspected, it's going to be a monumental task. But I think one way we can start with it is by, by going after people who have rental properties as a business and making sure that those homes are in compliance. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Pippin. Yes, I mean, absolutely, it's important to streamline the process for permitting on these units. Um, you know, we need to have a process that at the end of the day pays for itself and at the same time allows for a streamlined process for homeowners to improve their own properties. Um, allowing them the ability to improve their property and bring it up into compliance and up to code um, adds value to the subject property as well as to the surrounding neighborhood. And so ultimately you're um, increasing the assessed property values for the area which improves your property tax base and generates more re revenues for the city. So, yes, that's important. Thank you. Uh, Jess. If I'm reelected, I will uh, agree to streamline the uh, process. Will I consider amnesty for some fees? Yes. Uh, am I willing to allow the reevaluation of the fees? Uh, yes. However, I think we need to uh, be cautious so that uh, we take into account uh, how much it would be costing the city to do the inspections. In other words, we don't want to take a loss either. So yes, I would consider reducing the fees and uh, agreeing to some amnesty, uh, but we need to be careful not to do it in such a way that 
uh, the public works department ended up spending more city resources than collecting insufficient amount of fees. Uh, <coughs> lastly, I want to add that we, yes, we should in encourage property owners to bring their properties up to code. It's, it makes it safer, makes it easier for everyone. And should they decide to sell the property at some point, if it's already according to code, there's less disclosures to write from the standpoint of our local realtors. So. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, Herman. Yeah, we should definitely streamline the process, but I do have a concern on the proposed fees of 30000 being twice the amount that Petaluma or Sonoma County residents would have to pay. You must understand that their per capita income is much higher than ours, and they have a lower rate. So this rate is, uh, is, it needs to be reevaluated so their fees Oh, so that owners can bring their units up to code. These fees has got to, has got to change. They're pretty exorbitant. You know, we, we must be mindful that we're going to try to work with our homeowners because if they fail in that home venture, they're no longer going to be contributing that property tax to our general fund. If they find some way they have to leave or, or they're unable to, to, to make their mortgages, that's, the, that's critical revenues that we're going to lose. That subsidizes every job and every salary in the city departments. We must work with our homeowners. Uh, we have a code enforcement department. I'm chairman of the Code Enforcement Commission. And they, this could be complaint driven, so they go out and do the proper coding to see if any abuses are happening. But uh, again, let's be sensitive to our homeowners, because they, 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 are, they, they are the people that produce the revenues that subsidize everything in the city. Thank you. Well, thank you. Let's have an applause for this. <clears throat> this brings us to the Municipal Equity Index. The Municipal Equity Index is the first nationwide evaluation of municipal laws affecting the LBGT community. It examines laws, policies, services of municipalities from every state in the country, and it rates them on a basis of their inclusivity of LGBT people who live and work in these cities. Vallejo's index was 52 out of 100 points. Uh, there are four questions in this category. Uh, I've noticed that some, some of you are uh, blending the questions together, and that's fine, because if it helps you explain your position. Um, let's, if elected, will you work towards improving Vallejo's municipal equity index score? Uh, first up is Herman. Yes, uh, I, I, from the outset, I want to state that, I'm, that I am a Christian and I stand against any discrimination of any form. But I agree, we must improve the MEI index score. You know, I have a plan that would accomplish this. You, you know, um, when there are abuses to segments of this community, uh, it should be, should be corrected, it should be challenged. Now, I, I am planning to implement a whistleblower ordinance that would protect individuals that stepped up to the plate to cite inappropriate behavior to certain segment and target groups. Behavior like discrimination, nepotism, same family members in the same promotional line, and other abusive uh, behavior towards any target or, or segment or, or constituent groups. You know, these are the complaints that the Human Relations Commission could handle. You know, the, uh, the Human Relations Commission will be a complaint-driven entity like code enforcement. And folks in the city departments or folks that, are, that witness abusive behavior will then um, garner their, their complaints to the Human Relations and they'll do the investigation. And if founded, then we celebrate the, these individuals, individuals that step up to the plate. We want to help, you know, purge all, all inappropriate behavior that's occurring anywhere at any time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rosanna. Thank you for the question. Um, let me look. Yes, if elected, I will uh, work toward imp towards improving the um, MEI score. Uh, Vallejo is at 52, and the uh, comparable cities, uh, Concord is at 68, Long, uh, Long Beach, uh, Los Angeles is at 100. So that's where we would like to be. But we need to uh, get there, you know, uh, it's a process. Um, and, 
as a council member, I would uh, look into having our city uh, get more uh, active in setting policy. Uh, the MEI is based on several uh, areas, non-discrimination laws, relationship recognition, services and programs, LGBT liaison task force uh, in, in, uh, in the department. So those are things that I can address if elected, uh, look at those issues piece by piece, and hopefully improve that uh, MEI code. You know, even just a few points, hopefully in the next year, would be a, um, you know, work uh, in the right direction. So again, the LGBT community is, uh, a very uh, valuable component of our community, just like the ethnic communities, Filipino American community, Native American community, African American community. You know, we all live together in this wonderful community. And, uh, you know, we have the reputation of being the most diverse city in this nation. And I think that that's an asset and something that we need to uh, continue to work on and use that as a selling uh, point for Vallejo so that businesses will come here to Vallejo. Thank you. Well, thank you. Tony. Again, the first question, if elected, uh, will you work toward improving uh, Vallejo's Municipal Equity Index score? And it's uh, absolutely yes. Um, my position on restoring the Vallejo Human Rights Commission, I would certainly be in favor of that as well. I believe that it is important. It's an important commission. Um, and again, as Rosanna just said, we are recognized as the most diverse city in the nation and that's that's huge and we have to be able to relate to one another positively and um, not only that you asked about the cities close to us that are a little higher than us um, and what are the benefits of improving the score i was glad to see my hometown of berkeley at 95 oakland at 80 and even richmond was at 66 and i did read the uh, entire MEI a couple of times and according to it the benefits are certainly great and it ranges from higher incomes uh, levels of being attracted to housing and attracting more high-tech businesses to the community and lastly even as it relates to the police department um, having an LGBT liaison task force I certainly said yes because our de the police department uh, continues to need uh, all types of sensitivity training to everybody in the community so it makes sense thank you, uh, thank you. <coughs> uh, Jess as far as improving the uh, municipal uh, equality index of course I will do my best to help improve our score which is poor right now at 52 percent uh, I think we need to promote diversity in the city of Vallejo we you sometimes read about it or hear about it that we're one of the most diverse cities in the United States and we are we we've coexisted peacefully for many many years um, as far as uh, other cities uh, who have scored higher than Vallejo, I point to San Francisco and Berkeley. Uh, improving uh, the score uh, helps, helps Vallejo. Uh, I, I think um, uh, if we can demonstrate that uh, we, we are for diversity, then uh, employers and employees would consider coming to, to Vallejo. Uh, and, um, uh, do I want to restore the Human Relations Commission? I, I'm certainly willing to take a look at that and consider restoring this commission. Um, um, as far as uh, uh, task force, uh, I would also consider uh, creating a task force uh, to look at this so that uh, the LGBT community is represented uh, not only in uh, uh, possible employment, but also uh, in law enforcement. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Liat, you're up. I think that it's um, really unfortunate that Vallejo has the distinction of being at the bottom two of the index for last year. Um, there were all the cities that they looked at, which were I think about 20, all sc scored higher than Vallejo did. Uh, I think it's important that we have a Human Relations Commission. I've been advocating the rest restoration of the Human Relations Commission for years now. Um, <coughs> this is something that we did in with 
job equity with the uh, minorities within the city years ago. It's the same thing we would do with the LGBT community because the city doesn't really have any way, any real policy that they look at as far as job equity for the people in the community. So I think it would be a good idea to put it with the Human Relations Commission. I think that liaison for the police department could also be incorporated as part of that Human Relations Commission because at one time the police department did have a liaison that met with the Human Relations Commission to deal with the issues that had to do with law enforcement. Uh, thank you. Uh, Joanne. Yes, it's unfortunate that uh, Vallejo came in only 52 out of 100 points. Fresno came in at 50. That's the only city in California that we beat. <laughs> we do have neighbors who have done better. Berkeley, Concord, Oakland, Richmond, San Francisco, and some others that are not quite as close neighbors in the southern part of the state. Um, yes, I would support forming an LGBT liaison and restoring the Human Rights Commission, which was originally established to resolve differences between various parts of the community and improve the overall relationship of the community. As Martin Luther King said, equality for all strengthens a nation. I'm sure it would strengthen a city as well. This is also an economic development issue because people who decide where new businesses are going to be, which is approximately one third of the American workforce, professionals, innovators, engineers, look to cities who have diversity. That's where they want to locate. They feel that a welcome and stimulating environment is what is needed. And does Vallejo need economic development? I doubt if there's anyone who's attended any of these forums that would say anything other than a resounding yes. And this is a way to improve our economic development. Uh, thank you. Ronald. Well, I, I don't think I'll wait until I'm elected. It's something that I do on a, a daily basis. I have a lot of friends from uh, the LGBT community, and so I've uh, been in contact with this group for many, many, many years. Uh, it's very diverse, and uh, educational-wise, uh, I find that the friends that I have are, a lot of them are in the high-tech uh, industry. Um, so they, they would definitely be an asset. And um, uh, the cities, uh, I've heard them all, uh, with us being at the, the bottom. Um, I also looked at Brisbane at 57, Guerneville 68, Sacramento 79. Uh, the uh, other part of the question speaks towards uh, supporting uh, liaison and the Human Relations uh, Commission. Um, you know, I think the Human Relations Commission should serve everyone as a whole. And so that commission uh, should have a liaison with the police department. It shouldn't be limited to uh, just one group. It should be everyone. Because I think that uh, from time to time, everyone may have an issue that they want to have the police department uh, take care of. So. I wouldn't limit it to just the LGBT uh, uh, group, but as a community as a whole. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Let's see here. Pippin. So um, yes, of course, I would work towards improving the Vallejo's municipal equity index score. It's important that we as a city treat everyone equally, regardless of their sexual orientation or their gender identity. And we should require the same of our contractors and the individuals in our community as much as we are able to. I support equality for everyone. Um, my position on restoring the Vallejo Human Relations Commission, I would con re consider restoring that commission. Um, we do have one of the most diverse cities in the county and the country. And for me, it would be important to make sure that the commission looks at human relations support and issues for the community as a whole. 
Um, um, some of the f uh, close by cities that have higher scores, I think everyone's pretty much mentioned them already. <laughs> and um, the economic benefit is that it sends a message to employers and employees that Vallejo, being one of the most diverse cities in the nation, embraces and celebrates that diversity and that we are not only open for business to everyone equally, but also support a wonderful quality of life for all. Well, thank you. Um, and that closes uh, this uh, section or category. OK. Uh, we have the Measure B funding. And if you're paying attention to what's going on, there's a, there's a big argument over how to spend the money. Uh, I don't know whether that's legitimate or not. But nevertheless, there is there isn't a lot of discussion over this. Um, measure B, and this is from the ballot, is to enhance funding for 911 response, police patrols, firefighter and paramedic services, youth and senior programs, street and pothole repair, graffiti removal, economic development, and general city services. Shall uh, the sales tax be raised one cent expiring after 10 years? with all revenue legally required to stay in Vallejo. And if the internet is correct, that's what the ballot said. Um, what is your position on allocating Measure B funds to cover the costs of restoring and funding the various Vallejo commissions? Uh, I'd like to note that if you, when you go to the Vallejo website, uh, this is the new improved website, by the way, which actually is better, uh, you see on the little fine print down at the bottom says some commissions are not meeting. Uh, one of the commissions I'm interested in is the Financial Vitality Commission, or Financial Economic Development Commission. And we're meeting infrequently. Um, so let's start out with uh, Liat. What are your opinions on, on this? I think Measure B would be a good way to start. What we're needing for the commissions is a person that would be in a position such as an administrative anal analyst. And that person would need to work either under the mayor's office or under the city manager's office for the Human Relations Commission. And that person could also work for the other commissions that have like interests. So I think that we could start off with putting an analyst there that sp works specifically to get the commissions up and running and make sure that they have the staffing needs met so that the uh, cost is going to be incorporated through the Measure B funds. And then with the idea that eventually that position would have to go be put into the general fund for the regular budget. Um, I think the public safety portion of it um, would also be important. Um, they already have allotted monies to pay for public safety that is going to run for the duration of the Measure B funding. But I think it depends on the year and what the allocation is for and the needs are for each year and whether or not we're, how much the percentage that we're going to be using for that Measure B for public safety. Uh, thank you. Tony. Do you want me to answer A and B if I can? If you can. Okay. You've got one minute. Okay. <laughs> well, again, certainly under the, um, the government efficiency portion of Measure B, uh, I can see a portion of those funds being used to undergird the Vallejo commissions. Um, but certainly I would hope that uh, the boards are not meeting uh, because they don't have the money yet. Again, even those that are meeting infrequently, um, we, we certainly want to make sure that the commissions are funded, but it's important that they meet together to evaluate what the respective needs are of that commission so it can go forward. Um, also, the question asks uh, what percentage of Measure B funds should be allocated to public safety? Um, all 30 percent or what percentage do you think is fair? Uh, public safety is certainly one of, if not the major concern for the citizens of Vallejo that I continue to talk to. And I think 30% uh, <laughs> is a fair number. Um, the Measure B funds were initially, um, were, for, were initially for public safety. However, uh, I do want to say I am elated that the community um, participatory budgeting is in the process or in the place where it is to see so many per persons engaged in our community. So thank you. No, thank you. Um, Rosanna. 
Um, one of the uh, campaign themes in my agenda is to ensure that Measure B fulfills its promise to voters, and one of the issues that's been a recurring issue is public safety. So I want to make sure that that is, uh, that Measure B, some of Measure B's money be allotted for public safety, you know, in, which will include hiring more, more police officers at the authorized level. So the city council had authorized to hire, what, 20 police officers. But then again, we need to hire more because we're at a very low uh, ratio in terms of uh, police and uh, number of citizens in this community. Um, commissions that I would like to make sure is, um, um, you know, re revived is, of course, the Human Relations Commission. I forgot to mention that earlier. I want to make sure that that is revived. Um, we have a very active Vallejo Sister City uh, Commission, and actually how they fund their commission is they have an association, a nonprofit 501c3, that uh, funds their activities. Uh, the other commission that I would like to push for if I'm elected is the Youth Commission. If we are really to involve and engage youth in this community, we need to make sure that they have a voice uh, in this community. They're not voters, but uh, their voice is very important. We all say we care about youth, but you know, the Youth Commission has been inactive for the couple of, last couple of years. So that's something that I would like to make sure uh, is uh, revived and reinstated. And I know that there were a couple of youth that were involved in the PB process. That means they're engaged, they want to help, and they want to um, help our community. So let's give them that voice. And we can do that through the Youth Commission. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jess. I, I want to say that I uh, supported uh, PB1. I was a member of the steering committee. And PB2 is in the books. It's going to happen. Uh, and I think it's a good thing. Uh, we, we, however, as far as I think in the question it says, are you in favor of funding it multiple years? I think that would be difficult to do because our budget process is year to year. And like this year, we're changing council. So it's sometimes it's from council to council. So it'd be difficult to project funding for PB long term. Um, uh, as far as funding commissions, uh, I don't know that we've had a line item in our budget to fund commissions. Uh, we do incur staff costs. For example, the planning commission, we, we notice it, we write agendas, we publish it, we write minutes, we organize the meetings and so forth. And so we do incur uh, costs for a, a commission like the planning commission, but we don't necessarily budget for it. Uh, what percent of Measure B uh, funds should be for uh, public safety, just briefly? I don't, I don't want to put a percent on public safety. Public safety is at the very top of my list in 2011 when I ran. It's at the very top of my list today. No percentages. We, do, we will do what, it needs, what is needed to ensure the people are safe. Uh, thank you. Pippin. Um, so I'm going to answer both questions kind of simultaneously. Um, the challenge with the commissions not meeting is that there is limited staff available to prepare the agendas and, you know, operate the, the commission meetings. So um, I'm in support of restoring all of our reduced city services at some point um, with a priority on public safety, street repair, and cleanup, and a concerted focus on economic development. Keeping in mind that Measure B funds will sunset and we need to grow our revenues to supplement and eventually replace Measure B funds. We need to focus on implementing our economic development strategic plan, aggressively marketing our assets, and focus on building and growing our core industries. By doing this, we will create jobs, grow, sustainable, grow a sustainable tax base generator, and be able to hire more police officers, reopen our fire stations, repair our streets, and improve our quality of life. Thank you. Well, thank you. Ronald. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, Measure B fund should be used for the services that the voters voted for. Uh, with the economic position that we're in right now, we need to actually tighten our belts, uh, save where we can, spend where needed, uh, especially in areas that can produce uh, additional revenues uh, for the city. Um, in part B, uh, I wouldn't really want to commit any specific uh, percentage usage of uh, the Measure B funds to hire uh, new officers, uh, but rather 
uh, use other revenue sources to fund the cost of the new officers uh, to kind of preserve uh, the Measure B funds for other projects. Uh, and, you know, and, and that can be kind of sticky there, you know, but uh, I would first look for other uh, revenue uh, sources uh, to fund uh, the hiring of additional officers. And then looking at the uh, cost of, of a, a commission, even if it's, if it's not in existence, uh, we're in a situation where if uh, some commissions aren't operating right now and we're doing well, we should kind of keep that going as long as we can, uh, as long as it's not uh, adversely affecting our city government. Uh, thank you. Herman. Yeah, as, as far as the commissions are concerned, uh, I'm, I'm really uh, partial to this uh, inquiry. Um, I've been serving on the on a advisory commission, beautification advisory and code enforcement commission for five years. And per the charter and, and the ordinances, uh, commissions are voluntary. I haven't received a dime, and I, I'm not sure there's any cost associated with it. Now, per the charter, there, there are three commissions, the Planning Commission, the Civil Service Commission, and the Housing and Development Commission that are, are entitled to a stipend of mileage allowance. And that's the only cost. We have commissions that are, are ineffective or have, they're, 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 not, they're, they're, they're not working because, because of staffing. Uh, I, 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 my sentiment is, 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 is like that, that we have some staff problems from trying to um, uh, provide technical assistance to these commissions. As far as the public safety question concerned, you know, this is, this is the outcry from the public. Because we're, we're not, because we're ignoring this high unemployment rate and we're not bringing jobs to this jurisdiction, the public is saying, hey, I can't go to work, somebody's gonna rob me. So what we need to do is we need to bring, jo bring jobs here so that right now the number one priority is public safety. The public wants public safety. So all the funds that I see should go to public safety to stop the bleeding. Thank you. Well, thank you. And Joanne. Most commissions do not require funding in the sense that they need money to operate. The main reason, as you've heard from all of the other speakers, is that city staff is lacking to support the commissions that we have. So no city staff, uh, no meetings. The idea of deciding what percentage of Measure B funds should go to any particular area, especially police, is a little hard to um, decide on. And the reason I say that is rather than deciding what the percentage should be and then building it up to that level, police get a report annually from a state organization called Police Officers Standards and Training. And in that report, it tells how many police officers a city should need. That's what we need to look at to determine the level of our police force. Even with that, it's important that these contracts that are presently under negotiation be brought into line with what we can afford. There needs to be a two-tier benefit Employees need to contribute more towards their retirement and benefits for all city employees need to be equalized. It is not right that one city department has 100% paid health care and another has 75% paid. That sets up city departments pitting against each other. It reduces morale to a very low level and people don't work well when they think they're not worth as much as someone in another department. Until we do that, we can't really decide the level of our police. Thank you. Uh, this brings us to our uh, next uh, segment. Uh, so we have a half an hour left approximately. And uh, these are a lot of the questions that were submitted via email. Uh, these are questions that uh, people ask me at the farmer's market. And uh, 
What we'd like is just a very succinct, very direct question. So we have about a half an hour, and uh, if we do go through these questions, then maybe we'll take a break and end it. Uh, first question. Uh, what public service experience have you had, including serving on boards and commissions? And uh, we'll start out with uh, Rosanna. Thank you. I currently am serving my second term on the Solano County Board of Education. I was first elected to that position in 2007 and uh, ran on a post in 2011. I had served also as board president last year of that um, elected body. And for 12 years, I also served on the Vallejo School Board. From 2006 to 2008, I was uh, on the, Human, uh, on the uh, Housing and Redevelopment Commission. I served two years on that commission. And then I am actively involved with Seroptimist International of Vallejo. I've been a member there for, since 1997. I'm also actively a member of the um, Participatory Budgeting Steering Committee, the Filipino Community of Solano County, um, the Philippine Cultural Committee, um, let's see, and Fighting Back Board Partnership. And I was one of the founding members, actually, of Fighting Back Partnership in the 1990s. So I've been heavily involved in that organization. Plus, when my kids uh, were attending public schools, and I still have one child uh, attending Bethel High School, and he's in 10th grade, I was active and am active in the PTSO, Parent Teacher Association, and Parent Teacher Student Organization. And I'm also active at my church at St. Catherine's. So that's my involvement for the last 30 years. I've lived in this community for 32. So not bad for someone that's lived there a long time. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, Herman. Yeah, my, my commission experience is very extensive. I've been on a lot of appellate boards, commissions. I don't know if you remember the Comprehensive Employment Training Act, the CETA program. I was private industry, industry council chairperson for the, for, for the prime sponsor in uh, the South Rim, South Pacific Rim. I've been uh, on commissions of the local CAP agency in Sonoma County, Santa Rosa. I've been, I'm, I'm presently on a commission here in the city of Vallejo for the last five and a half years, beautification advisory and code enforcement commission. No, I, I've been horse trading on commissions for a very long time. Maybe that's why I'm broke. <laughs> But at any rate, I have extensive experience on commissions. And I want to say these are the unsung heroes, these people that serve on commissions, because they, for the most part, do not get paid. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ronald. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, can you give us a little bit of information about what commissions and what community organizations uh, you have uh, served on uh, or qualifications that you bring to this, uh, uh, to the opportunity to serve on city council? Well, the first one would be I'm a citizen and resident of the city of Vallejo. Uh, that's the, the simple part. Um, as far as uh, boards or commissions are concerned, I haven't served on any boards or commissions. Uh, I do sit on and have sat on school site cal uh, councils at uh, two different schools, uh, Highland Elementary. I'm currently uh, serving my second year, and I sat on the uh, school site council of uh, Mare Island uh, Elementary School. Um, as far as uh, public service, I would say I haven't been one that's been out in the open with public service, but I, I serve our community. I feed our homeless, I clothe our homeless, but it's not something that I'll go to the newspaper and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm a citizen of Vallejo, I love the citizens of Vallejo, and so uh, I'm a very loving person. So I give of myself to each and every one that I come in contact with that uh, may need something. If I have it, I can provide it to you. If not, then I'll help you uh, find a way. Um, but uh, this is my first time to actually serve an entire city. I'm excited about it. It's something that I'm uh, definitely ready for. Um, it's a great step, uh, but it's one that I'm uh, willing to make for our citizens. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, Joanne, tell us a bit about your experience. 
Well, 12 years on the city council, three years on the planning commission, eight years each on the economic development commission and the beautification advisory commission, chaired the ad hoc public safety, the ad hoc citizens public safety committee and the citizens budget advisory committee on the Mare Island Reuse Committee, Solano Transportation Improvement Authority, Interagency Committee, and Trustee for Vallejo Sanitation and Flood Control, <coughs> Tri-City County Cooperative Planning Group, Interagency Committee, I think I mentioned that one, sorry, I'm reading from two lists, um, Mare Island Transition Committee, and founder of the Access Vallejo program. Civically, director of the Mare Island Historic Park Foundation, steering committee member of Better Vallejo, charter member, Vallejo Naval and Historical Museum, past treasurer of Vallejo Symphony Association, past director of Vallejo Neighborhood Housing Services, member of Vallejo Unified School District Vision 2020 Project, and their steering committee, past chair of the Napa Solano Kaiser Permanente Health Council, member of the Napa Solano Kaiser Permanente Ethics Committee, and co-founder of the Napa Solano Post Polio Support Group. Well, thank you. That, that's a, quite a Besides list. Besides that, I haven't done my... Uh, Tony. I am currently... Uh, board member of the uh, Community Action Project of Solano County for the past three years, Cap Solano, and as a voice for the indigent population of Vallejo. I have served as the uh, leader of the Berkeley Ecumenical Strategies team. Um, I have some police chaplaincy training, and certainly for the past 25 years, I have been a pastor where I have served many, many people from many communities and in fact right now in this community and in case I don't get a chance to say it later thank you for coming to this community we currently serve uh, we we feed now within the last three months we've gone from feeding 120 families to nearly a thousand families uh, just across the street um, due to the need and poverty level of this community. And so, again, I'm grateful for the United Dems for hosting the meeting here in North Vallejo in particularly. So we um, are an active part of the community in many ways. We also have uh, partnered with the, uh, Ella, the Solano Middle School, where we serve families um, during holiday season if they need meals. Um, we've been able to uh, work with the principal just to have volunteers um, on the campus, uh, not for any proselytizing, but for the sake of helping the yard stay safe. And so we reach out to the community in many, many ways. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, Pippin? Um, so I'm currently chair of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce. I am past chair of the Vallejo Business Alliance. I am the chamber liaison to CCRC. Um, I served on the uh, board for Leadership Vallejo. I'm also a graduate of Leadership Vallejo. I'm currently on the board for the Solano Association of Realtors. And I served on the steering committee for participatory budgeting and was the facilitator for the public safety committee for participatory budgeting. And I am um, a part of Vallejo Education and Business Alliance and um, worked with the school district in the spring to put together a youth to work internship program and um, was able to secure 17 jobs for students just this past summer. Thank you. Thank you, Pippin. Uh, Jess. So I have about uh, 25 years of uh, federal government experience while I was on active duty uh, with the United States Navy. The last 10 years of my career, I was a senior department head, uh, sitting on boardrooms similar to the city council, except we weren't looking for a majority vote. The admiral's making all the decisions. Um, after retirement, I uh, went back to private industry and I serve, uh, living in Vallejo, I serve as a board of director of the Phelan Chamber of Commerce. 
I was uh, two-term president of the Filipino American Retired U U.S. Armed Forces Association and a one-time president of the Vallejo Veterans Memorial Building Council, where I remain as their government uh, liaison, and I'm also serving now as a council member. Uh, thank you. And Leah. I just recently retired after 38 years with the federal government. Um, I also work with the Educational Justice Program, which was a project that was grant driven through the Unified School District. I work with Omega Boys and Girls Club. I also work with the Senior Meals Project that was here in North Vallejo. I was a 10 year member, active member of United Dems. Um, also served as vice president of that organization. I served for 10 years on the Human Relations Commission and I recently completed 13 years on the board of directors for the Greater Vallejo Recreation District. I've also worked for 17 years with the Vallejo Alcohol and Tobacco Policy Coalition, which is a group of concerned citizens to try to decrease the harm from tobacco and alcohol in the community. I have worked with the interagency committee while I was on GVRD, and most recently I met on a, with a workshop from the Bay Area with a group that was called Economic Road to Prosperity, which looks at barriers for people who have low wage uh, income to figure out ways to be able to bring them into middle income jobs and what the barriers were to eliminate that within the Bay Area. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is taking a little longer, of course, than I thought. Uh, we're gonna skip, and I'd like this one to be a quick, Try to try to make a quick reply, and then we'll wrap up with uh, each of the candidates uh, getting a one-minute closing uh, speech. Uh, binding arbitration was struck down with the passage of Measure A in June 2, 2010. Do you support putting the return of binding arbitration on the ballot, Ronald? That's a really good question. Yes, it is. <laughs> With a really good answer, and that, and that answer would be absolutely not. Um, I, would, I would not put our city and our citizens in a situation where we have no uh, negotiating uh, room. Uh, once you go into binding arbitration, you're stuck with what the judge uh, decisions is, whether or not uh, you're headed to bankruptcy or if you can afford it. It doesn't matter. Thank you. Uh, Leah. No, I would not support putting it on the ballot. I work with the citizens group that collected petition signatures to try to get the city to put it on the ballot in the first place. And then when the city decided that they would themselves recognize the fact that there were many people that were wanting to have binding arbitration moved from the charter, they put it on the ballot. And so no, I would not be in favor of putting it back on the ballot since the people have already spoken and wanted to have it removed. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Joanne. No, I would not support putting it back on the ballot. I already fought to put it on the ballot once. The citizens voted. They have stated what they want. And I don't want this to turn into the House's repeated voting on the Affordable Care Act. I don't think we need to vote on this 40 times. Um, not having binding arbitration allows the city to control its own finances. The people that you elect on the council are charged with passing a budget every year. If someone comes in from out of town like an arbitrator to make a decision on a contract, that takes the authority, the power, out of the hands of the council to implement the budget that you've all seen and that you elected the council to create and pass. Thank you. Um, Herman. Yeah, I'll very briefly know uh, the citizens already spoken and there's no need in doing it again. Thank you. Thank you. Tony. Yeah. 
In regards to that, I certainly would want to make sure whatever costs we looked at around binding arbitration, there's so many cities that do without it. Um, that's why it's important to certainly elect competent leaders in Vallejo uh, that can negotiate economic justice without uh, binding arbitration. Thank you, Tony. Pippin. If it made sense, I would. It made sense at one point to have it in the charter, and then it was removed by the voters when it no longer made sense. Thank you. Uh, Rosanna. At this time, no. Uh, I want to see how this uh, plays out, because currently they're in the process of collective bargaining and see what, uh, what uh, is the outcome of that collective bargaining process in the future, perhaps. Uh, Jess. Well, the people of Vallejo remove binding arbitration from the city charter, and only the people of Vallejo could put it back. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's see. I think we ran out of time. Uh, what I'd like to do my, my timer back. Do we have a timer? No. <laughs> no. Okay. You get one minute uh, closing statements. And uh, I'd like to start with Rosanna. And any, anything you want to talk about. Okay. I'm going to wait for the timer. Yikes. I would like to thank the uh, Democrat Club for hosting tonight's forum. And thank you to all the folks that spent their time to listen to us. I am running, I am Rosanna Verder Aliga. I'm running for the two year seat on the Vallejo City Council. I've said it before, the reason I'm running is because I am passionate about our city. I am a 32 year resident with 30 years of volunteer work, management, leadership, and public service experience, including 18 years as an elected member of the Solano County Board of Education and the Vallejo Boards of Education. As a senior manager and family therapist, I have been at the front lines providing critical health and social services to our city's residents. If elected, I will bring team and consensus building skills, work with the mayor and the council to reshape and rebuild our city as a business friendly, safe, financially sound, welcoming, diversity celebrating, and vibrant community today and tomorrow. I ask for your vote this November 5th. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jess. Thanks, John. I believe that uh, there is hope for the city of Vallejo. We are a diverse city of decent and peace-loving people. We are located in the heart of the Bay Area, and our city is, has geographical features and weather patterns which are the envy of many cities. In my heart, I believe that improving public safety holds the key to our economic recovery. If you vote for me, I will work tirelessly to increase our police force to 130 officers, one for every 1,000 residents. As a community, we could then join hands with the Vallejo PD. We can work and reduce crime, businesses will return to Vallejo, and jobs will be created. As a councilman, I've demonstrated respect for our Mayor Osby Davis, our Vice Mayor Stephanie Gomes, as I have respected all my fellow council members. I have demonstrated the ability to work with all of them, and I know I can work with a new council in January of 2014. Every vote I have ever made since becoming a councilman, I do it with you in mind. I ask myself simple questions before I vote. Is the resolution in front of me good for you? Is it good for the people of Vallejo? Does it protect lives and property? Is it good for business, and will it create jobs? Does it make sense? Is it sustainable? These are simple questions I ask myself, and the answer has to be yes before I push that button and vote yes. In January, we will have a new council. God willing, I'll be one of seven. We will not always agree, but we will, I will always try to find common ground. Thank you, have a good evening. Thank you, United Democrats. Please vote for me on November 5th. Uh, thank you. Um, Tony. 
Thank you. And again, let me say thanks again for you choosing this location for this event. Um, again, as opposed to making campaign promises, I really want to build on what we're currently doing. I believe Vallejo is a destination city. I believe that we have uh, the heart um, and the capacity to bring many, many people to our city. Uh, we do want to continue to build on the projects like Solano 360. I do want to continue from the city council position uh, to create uh, opportunities for persons to be employed, to go from unemployment to employment, which is something that I do every day. We need jobs in the city of Vallejo as a deterrent to crime. We certainly need to help undergird our law enforcement. And we as a community have to work together. And the last thing I want to say is that just as uh, we talked about branding not long ago, Leo must continue to lift up what is good. We have so many assets. We have so many wonderful colleges. We have our waterfront. We have so many uh, wonderful, uh, again, assets in our city. But the greatest asset we have are the people of Vallejo. And I certainly believe that to be, the, we are so much better together and we can accomplish anything as we work hard to get that done. I solicit your vote and look forward to sharing further with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Joanne. My platform for this election is to improve public safety, fix our streets, achieve financial stability, and have economic development. All of the first three are dependent on achieving good economic development. Good economic development and good planning are what bring jobs. Jobs don't just happen. We have to create the climate for it. I think I have proven my leadership. Thank you for letting me read that entire list. Um, I have shown that on the council I can ask the tough questions and make the hard decisions. I do not accept any special interest money or support in any form. All of my support has come from grassroots. I do have the council experience that you have all been able to measure me by. I also have the historical knowledge that came in very handy a few months ago when there was a recommendation to sell a waterfront parcel for $1 to a developer. I had the legal documentation that prohibited that, and we have a relatively new staff, and I don't think they knew where to look for it. So I ask for your vote respectfully based on my record, not on promises. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Herman. Hello, yeah. Besides the 40 years plus experience, public and private sector experience, I'm, I'm qualified to, to serve on the council and hit the ground running. But here's something you don't know about Herman and the reason why I'm running for office. I have a ministry at the Christian Help Center. This is the homeless shelter here in Vallejo. And here, these are the folks that the city has failed. The homeless shelter is comprised of people that have been displaced from foreclosures, bad choices in life, and what have you. We have no economic or, be, or social safety net for these folks. But if we have a better city council, we could maybe change this outcome. I, I appeal to you folks to, to vote for change. Uh, uh, I'm not more of the same. I have no one endorsing or giving me money for this campaign. My obligation is only to you and Jesus Christ. And I, I implore you, please, when you do vote, vote for Herman Blackwell. This has changed. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Pippin. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the United Democrats for hosting the forum tonight. Um, and my name is Pippin Dew, and I'm a native of the Bay Area. I got involved in our community many years ago through the Chamber of Commerce and, Commerce and Leadership Vallejo. And I fell in love with this community. I then chose to buy my first home here and raise my daughter. I'm a local realtor and chairwoman of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce. 
As a mother and a business owner, I'm concerned about our city's public safety and the shortage of police officers on the streets. Our streets need repairs and we have the highest unemployment rate and the highest number of residents living in poverty in the county. However, we have very limited resources to resolve these issues. The only way to resolve these issues going forward is to focus on growing our revenue. Our local economy has a foundation in four major industries, manufacturing, healthcare, tourism, and higher education institutions. If we aggressively market our assets, which are the highest skilled labor force per capita in the Bay Area, lowest cost of doing business in the Bay Area, and our prime location to these target industries, we will attract new businesses and investment to our community. This will create jobs, grow the city's revenues, and allow us to improve public safety and restore services to our city. If the world knows what Vallejo has to offer, we will begin to have choices on which proposed ideas and projects we want, rather than continuing down the path of having to choose between a single project idea versus nothing at all, because Vallejo is the city of great opportunities. I believe in this deeply, and I have been working hard on this mission for years. If you feel as I do that the key to the success of our community is based on solid economic development, business retention, expansion, and attraction, creating new jobs for our residents, and growing our revenues through these activities, then vote for me, Pippin Dew. Thank you for your support. Thank you. And Ron Johnson. Thank you, Jonathan. I want to thank everyone for coming out, and especially uh, the United Dems for hosting this event. It's certainly been a, a pleasure to be here. I want to thank my, my wife and my, my daughter for coming along uh, to uh, give me that support. Um, I want to be there for every citizen of Vallejo. My, my office and headquarters is open to everyone uh, of this city. Uh, my grassroots campaign, and it's truly a grassroots campaign uh, is funded by um, at least 90% of it by my wife and I. Um, but uh, this is our time. This is our city. Uh, we have a very bright and intelligent uh, people who may know more collectively than the council that you're getting ready to um, elect. I don't proclaim to know it all. All I know is that if you give me your vote, I'll make sure that your voices are heard. Like you, uh, I've been a disappointed citizen with the hope for a better Vallejo for all of us. With the encouragement of my grandfather and the so support of my wife, Mary Tess, Galicia Johnson, and my sons, Cameron and Tehran, and finally my princess, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Johnson, whom I encouraged to run for class president of her eighth grade class. Although she was the smartest candidate, she was the runner up. However, because of the wisdom of her friend who was the winner, they continued to work together to build a better school. If you elect me as your next city councilman, it will be my duty and my honor to work with my fellow candidates and the past uh, council members as well as our community uh, to utilize the good ideas that the community have voiced to them and to us. Uh, the past, uh, excuse me, but I will learn from the mistakes that they have made in the past to ensure that they're not repeated. Uh, this is your city and the council is supposed to be your voice. If you vote for me, Ronald J. Johnson Jr., you can be assured that your voice will not only be heard, but it will also be acted upon. I'm a father who makes promises, and I have children who make sure I keep them. So these promises that I have made, you the citizens of Vallejo can uh, make sure that those promises are kept. I don't mind having People uh, call me to remind me of what I've said because I do stand by my word. My word is my bond. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, and this concludes our program for the evening. And I'd like to thank everyone. Oh. Did I miss Leon? I did. I'm sorry. Leon. Does that mean I get two minutes? <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. As I've said before, I've lived here for 27 years. I've worked out in the community for the past 17 years. I've worked with a diverse group of people. My years of work with the Greater Vallejo Recreation District has shown that I've had leadership skills and that I'm able to keep a budget, to maintain a sustainable budget, to work with employee groups, to come up with fair contracts, and that we were able to listen to the community and address what those needs are. I think as an independent person, you have the ability to be able to listen to different groups with an open mind and come up with the best decisions that, for, that would benefit the community as a whole. I'm also a grassroots candidate. All of my money, except for from family members, has come from people here in Vallejo. As a member of this community for 27 years, I too have heard plenty of promises, some of the same promises that you hear now. And I think it's important that we understand that we're right at the point where we're seeing a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel, and we're moving toward the right direction. And we're doing that because of the work that we've had from our, our current council. I think it's important to address the fact that that council also has been independent in their decisions, and they were not moved by special interest groups. So I'm hoping that people will make sure that they go out to vote, they take into consideration my experience and my knowledge, and the fact that I can make decisions so it would benefit the community as a whole, and that I would also be open to listening to the concerns and addressing those concerns on a regular basis as I've done in the last 17 years. So thank you to the United Dems for holding the meeting tonight, being able to get some information from the candidates, and I hope that you'll vote for me on November 5th. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance tonight. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, and thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark and Jay.